<laughs> Hello. Welcome to Seesaw Project, the artist playground. I'm Kina Crow. I'm a chubby little white woman and a mixed media artist. Uh, maybe we can see a picture of my work here somewhere. That's me. That's what I make. But thank God I'm not doing this alone. I have um, two other co-hosts, which I'd like you to meet. Um, Beth, Beth, are you there? That's out here. Hi. Hi, Kina. Hi, everyone. Beth Bojarski in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. I am an oil painter. And this, somewhere, that's what my work looks like. Hi, thank you. Um, let me tell you about what's coming up on today's episode, our fourth episode. Wow. Um, today we're going to introduce a new segment or two, interme intermingled with some of our favorites. We will update you on studio news. And then we're gonna to move to lightning round of questions. And hey, we even have a question for everyone out there. Then we're going to go to something new. It's called Seesaw Surfs the Web. You're gonna like it, it's fun. We have our Seesaw shout outs, something I look forward to each episode. I hope you do too. And then finally, our featured artist and Today, it happens to be someone I can go on and on and on and on and on about because it is my husband, sculptor Mark Winter. But we are missing one person yet. Let's bring Chris Delquist on. Hi, Chris. Hi. Hi. Good to see you all. I'm Chris Delquist. I'm coming from Kansas City, Missouri, and I'm a photographer. And my work looks a little something like this. And uh, we're really, really glad that y'all are here with us tonight. Um, if you have uh, not subscribed to our YouTube channel yet, yet, please do that on the red button below or like our page on Facebook. It really does help uh, us to build our audience. Um, and we also wanna hear from you tonight. So in the chat, either on YouTube or Facebook, um, ask us your questions, give us your comments, and um, we'll read those throughout uh, the episode. We'll answer as many questions as we have time for. And then my um, trusty partner, Kyle, is behind the scenes. And any of the artists that you see uh, throughout the show, he's going to be putting links to their websites uh, over in the comments. Um, so don't feel like you have to get a pen and pencil uh, immediately. Um, they'll be there for you to um, check out soon enough. So anyway, thanks so much for being with us. And uh, let's get on with the show. Oh, we have one more person to introduce, oh, yes. our, our little behind the scenes. Oh, well, he's not that little. He's my little boy. Max, you want to say hi? Hi. Hi. There's hi, Max. Everybody. We couldn't, we can't forget Max. He's doing the, our, he's doing our whole thing thing run. Run. Yes, it's time <laughs> to go to Studio News. Studio News. Who has some Studio News? <laughs> Beth? Do you have some news? Do you have um, some well, news? my news is simple. I am the next episode coming up in two weeks. So wrapping up work, wrapping up the paintings. Uh, I moved to the next stage in a day or two, and that's assembly, framing, making it look all nice, finished work. So that is what I'm doing. What about you, Kina? Kina, do you have news? I uh, The only news, I am just working, working seven days a week. Um, finishing up working on uh, some special orders. And then and then I have an episode coming up. So that's about it. What about you, Chris? I've got some really exciting news. Oh. All right. uh, I, um, since the last episode where I shared Measuring Abundance, um, I've got a new gallery partner. Oh, uh, awesome. New gallery yeah. representing my work, specifically Measuring Abundance and Ghost Notes. It's um, a gallery I've admired for a long time. I admire uh, both the gallerist Susan Watts and the artists that they represent. It's uh, Olson Larson Galleries. It's in West Des Moines. Um, nice. And so we delivered 25 pieces to them. Wow. Oh, wow. So, yay. Yeah. 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 yeah so if you're in Des Moines, go check it out. Oh, it's fantastic. Congrats. Yeah. And it's, it's all online um, in as of yesterday uh, at OlsonLarsonGalleries.com. So wonderful. I'm really, really excited. Wonderful. About that. That's super yeah. exciting. It is. <clears throat> well, that's good studio news. 
that's yeah, that is some good studio news. Yeah. So we have been uh, we've been putting out um, uh, asking you guys to ask us some questions, you know, because uh, uh, we like to chit chat and we got some really juicy ones, too. And normally we do a little lightning round. We just do the three of us. But we thought it'd be really fun if we had our featured artist uh, and best be. cute, cute, cute husband, Mark, Hi. come on in. And Hello. part of our lightning round questions. Hi, Mark. Hello. Hi, everybody. Mark. This is Mark Winter. This is the amazing Mark Winter. Hello, friend. Hello. <laughs> Hello, wife. <laughs> okay, let's get some questions. Oh, thank you, Lynn. Lynn, this is from Lynn Whipple. Love what you all are doing. Thank you. Might you each share a favorite book that in some way inspired your life and artwork? Mark. Oh, I, I understand first. too. <laughs> You're in the hot seat, buddy. I, I, the first thing that comes to mind, I can't think of anything like a novel or contemporary that inspired me as an adult, but as a kid, my mother taught art classes in our basement and there was a library of books down there and there was this illustrated book about sci-fi fantasy craziness and I just I couldn't put it down and I, I still think about it today. So. So we'll get that title. Oh yeah, right? I have no idea what and it was. We'll <laughs> I have no idea where it is, but it was. It's a it good was, book uh, out there. I know. I, I love it. Yeah. The choice, if you're watching, let us know what the title is. Right. Okay, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> it's probably still down there for all I know. Um, um, my, uh, I, I'll say, Geek Love. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Nothing done, of course. How about you, Chris? So there's so many. Um, I'm a big big reader, uh, but there's one really pivotal book that I think I've been reading for the last 20 or 25 years. It just sits next to my bed and it's called Art and Fear. And it was so pivotal in uh, me actually pursuing my art. It was what gave me the nudge um, to start my own studio practice when I was working in commercial um, art, commercial photography and film prior to that. Yeah, it's a good book. Mine's pretty dog-eared as well. Yeah. I always find something new in it, right? When I'm now I'm gonna go read it again. Yeah, right. <laughs> How about you, Kina? Um so it's weird. It's um my favorite book, I think, or or book that, you know, sort of changed uh things for me was a book called Bird by Bird by Anne Lamott. Is that my saying her yeah. name right? Okay, yeah. And it's really a book for writers, but um, it's so, it sends you so deep into like creating characters. So I think that anybody who makes figurative work, that it's a it's a book really, really worth reading. It's one of my favorites, so. Um, okay, what about the next question? You wanna read this one, Beth? Sure. Lisa, hi, Lisa, Kattenbracker. My other question, well, she's busy with questions. <laughs> my other question, how big or small do you want to go in creating? Mark, we're gonna- Me again? I get one, why not? Uh, well, you know, I, how big, I think, I think about the limitations of the street fairs that we're all used to and you can only bring so big, like life size is the, really the biggest I've ever done. And I've got a, maybe a few chances coming up to do some bigger scale things where there'd be cranes involved and and uh, you know structural engineers and things like that. So maybe, big, big, oh. bigger is better in America. Bigger is better, baby. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait. How about you, Beth? Um, I am going to actually say, I've had this idea, I really would love to do it small, really small. Um, pocket, I call, the, the idea is called pocket-sized paintings. You bring them with you where you go. Um, I've found in antique stores in little um, felt bags, old watch, um, you know, where you open up the watch, I don't know what the term is, um, but gut that and put a painting in there so you can close that one and mm -hmm. put it leave. Yes. And carry your painting, we should carry our art collections. I would love you. that, I would yes. love that so much. So uh, that's, a thought that I need to jump on because I do like that idea. Uh, Chris, what about you? Well, at the risk of sounding like I'm stealing both of your answers, <laughs> uh, I, I really like um, am really attracted right now to working at kind of both extremes because I think both um, extremes catch your attention in a different way. So 
Uh, I've had the good luck to work uh, really large. I've got a piece um, on a building here in Kansas City in a hotel downtown that is 140 feet by 10 feet. Um, so it's essentially the entire first floor at street level. Um, so I, I'm really excited to do more work like that. Um, and I've also been making in the last, well, since we've been locked down, a series of tiny little four inch prints that are these, I've been calling them little meditations and kind of in a similar nice. way. So have this little quiet moment in your hand. So have one of those too. Oh, <laughs> And I love little things. I mean, I love my little people, but like, I don't think I can get much smaller because I have to make them with two pairs of glass. <laughs> I'm like practically going blind. So um, I think what I'd really like to do is is like do a building. I would like to like, uh, you know, buy a big building, a big house, a big church, some old building and just make it like some kind of a art venue, like a party space, like a, I don't know, an experience. So that's what I'd like to do. Taking this virtual playground into yes. three dimensions, yes. right? Yeah. 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 And it'll have cocktails. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. So what's our next question? All right. From Steph Keelan, what do you do when you're stuck creatively, when the mojo is just not flowing? Mark, you're back in the hot seat. All right. Um, get the hell out of there. Walk away. Before you hurt yourself, in my world, I you know I, I try so hard and it's not working. Just walk away. Go to a movie. Go to like you know. We love your movies, don't you? Yeah, when you when you could go to movies, <laughs> that was my favorite thing. Just, just leave, go to a movie, and come back and and reset and get back in there. Walk away. That's my answer. How about you? How you? I'm probably um, I you know what I never did it uh, years ago, but just going outside and gardening and picking a vegetable and eating that vegetable. And um, yeah, probably a little outside time because I don't get a lot of that. Um, I lock myself away. So yeah, uh, get some fresh air. Garden. I remember you did that big gigantic piece where her collar was made of radishes. Mm -hmm. and, I mean, I, now I'm thinking that's where you got it. <laughs> exactly, right? Yeah. <laughs> what about you, Chris? Well, I have um, kind of two strategies, kind of depending on where I am in the process. Either I go outside for hikes and kayaks, you know, with my with my camera, and get real quiet, and um, or I go and fill the cup. So I go to a gallery or a museum, or look at picture books, look at other people's art, right? Just kind of let it wash over me for a period of time. Nice, that sounds really nice. Right, and how about you, Kina? Donuts. Donuts. <laughs> oh, donuts. donuts. Fixes everything. Right. Magical. Magical. <laughs> I also have one more thing I forgot, I, and you'll see in the in the video that's about to show in a little while, I have a, I toot my own horn that, it'll make more sense later, trust me. Okay. <laughs> well, look at that, it's gonna come back around, so yeah. that's nice. Right. Yeah. Right. That's nice. Little teaser, a little foreshadowing well, there. Right. Well, nice. These questions are so fun that we thought we'd actually ask everyone out there watching um, a question. It's time for Ask a Collector. So this episode's question is, how are you currently bringing art into your life? Um, we were nosy. We want to know. <laughs> we're very nosy. Uh, put answers in the comment section of this episode. I believe the question is also posted on Facebook, so um, you can go there. Um, and, and, and we'll post it again there. Right? Yeah, yep. let us know. I want to know. Well, no, we'll gather those um, responses, and in the next episode, we'll kind of talk about those. I'd love to see what everybody how how everybody responds to that one. Yeah. Well, I know I know one way that I am um, bringing art into my life, uh, like a lot of us is right here on the right here on the computer. And I think with us building all of our video skills, I've been uh, really watching uh, other artists that I admire and respect and what they're doing with the medium of video, how they're expressing their work. Um, and so I th we thought it'd be fun to share some of that uh, with y'all as well, so that you could meet uh, some of our friends that are doing an exceptional job with it. So uh, this is Seesaw Surfs the Web. 
And I'm going to inter- we're going to introduce a good friend of ours from Oregon, uh, Richard Harrington. Can you bring up the volume just a little bit on it, uh, Max? Uh, Richard speaks kind of softly. My barn paintings are deeply connected to my family and their roots in Eastern Oregon. I've never lived there, but it's always felt like home. It's my mother's country. She was an only child, but her mother was one of nine, and all my mother's aunts and uncles became mine. My grandma Lola was the eldest, and after her sister Ada came seven brothers, and those I knew best were cattle and timbermen. They were men of gentle smiles and bone-crushing handshakes, and they lived quiet, physical lives of hard work close to the land. My aunts used to hug me so hard and long they made the uncle's handshakes seem gentle. My Aunt Marilyn, gone just last year, was on horseback every chance she got well into her 90s. It was in this country that my love for the natural world was born. I have my Uncle David to thank. He knew the country the way I've always dreamed of knowing a place, and he started me fishing when I was three or four years old. He took my brother Todd and me all over the county to explore and fish his favorite spots. I was initially drawn to art by my love of the outdoors and the fantasies of my youth, mountain men and cowboys and the landscapes which they explored. It led me to the work of Frederick Remington and Charles Russell, Winslow Homer and N.C. Wyatt. Their work started me along the path of painting. But along the way, I ran across a Mark Rothko retrospective, and from Rothko to Motherwell, Clifford Still and Richard Devencorn, to color fields and textures, motion and abstraction, questioning everything I thought art was to me. Over 20 years ago, I took my wife Darby to meet my family here. We found ourselves in the massive hay barn on the original family homestead. I used to roam around in it as a kid, but with fresh eyes, seeing it all anew, a body of work took shape. Trying to take a common theme and make it something new, to turn a subject of sweet nostalgia and American pie into something contemporary and iconic, representational to an extent, but imbued with color, energy, and surface of expressionism. So when I paint a barn, I keep in mind the heroism of my early influences, the sense of atmosphere, the tactile, textural experience of a place. And I think of the simplicity and monumentality of more modern influences, the tones and textures and color fields of memory. It is an homage to my aunts and uncles, to people like them, to labor and to relationship with land and place, to painting and to our collective history, to memories of the things I love, Wasn't that fabulous? So beautiful. Uh, I so love beautiful. Richard's work. And Richard uh, sells himself short when he says he doesn't know the land as well as his uncles. Uh, Kyle and I are normally out there this time of year. And uh, I've, I've gotten texts from Richard, um, like, you need to go up this road to this top of this hill to watch the sunset, you know, like yeah. those, like every dirt road. It's my, a- my family is, is from the same general area going back 150 years. So that really resonates. And um, <clears throat> I love Oregon. Of course, we'd normally be there now, right. Or on, on our way to art in the pearl, which um, 
Bummer. <laughs> we, would, we would be in bend today. Yeah. We would be uh, oh. setting up in yeah. bend today. But um, go visit uh, Richard's work. His website is over in the comments. Um, he's doing some amazing um, printmaking right now um, during this COVID time. So, Fantastic. Yeah. And he's a super sweet soul as well, you know, yeah. as well as a wonderful artist. Yeah. I love the line in there about um, his uncle's bone crushing handshake, but his aunt's hugs that are um, strong enough to make those handshakes feel gentle. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> he painted such a beautiful picture with just those words, you know? Yeah, the so. photography in that film was absolutely gorgeous. Just yeah. gorgeous. Yeah, it's lovely. The music, everything. Yeah, everything. very nice job yeah. on surfing the web, I say. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> Well, he and I've got such an affinity for one another's uh, work. I've um, I follow him and what he is up to pretty closely. Mm -hmm. I can see why for sure. All right, do we have some oh. more artists to introduce? Well, see saw shout out. Yay! Um, fast becoming one of my favorite segments of the show. Again, want to thank everyone who has been submitting videos to us. Um, the segment, just a little reminder, is um, shouting out the names of artists that we admire and are inspired by. But we also want you to do the same. What is the name of an artist that you love that we may not be aware of? Um, pass that on to us in a video and we'll feature them in an episode coming up. And I'll tell you how to do that after this next um, Seesaw Shoutout episode. Max, can you play our episode? Hello, my name is Victoria Hemminghouse. I'm based in Devon, uh, just by Cornwall in the UK. My shout out is to Lisa uh, Kattenbreaker, who is a very talented young lady from Washington State, making beautiful batiks with um, incredible stories and unity. And you should get her in. That's Lisa Kattenbreaker, get her in. Bye. Hi, it's Beth in Milwaukee. Big shout out this week to Amanda Outcult. She's in Norfolk, Virginia. Printmaker, painter, metalsmith. She does it all. Check it out.
awesome. Right? A good round. A good round. Thank you. Thank you, everyone who sent in shout outs. Um, and not only the artists, I really do love these artists and I'd love to be able to share their name with you guys, but also good. I'm going to say hi to Victoria. It's good to see hi, you. Victoria. Victoria. She's across the pond. Um, so that is that was a special little treat as well. Yeah. Um, but hey, let me remind everybody, super easy. Have fun with us. Give us some names. Let us do the dive. Let us find these people. Um, take your phone. Film a 10, 15 second video. Tell us your name and where you're from. And then give us the name of that artist, where they're from and their medium. We have the information on how to do that. You can see it right here at the end of the shout out video, as well as in the comment section um, of on Facebook and YouTube. So we, we're hoping to put links everywhere so they're easy to find. Um, we're trying to make it painless for you. Play along. We'd love to, to do get it. Done. Do it. Do it. <laughs> I want to give a special congratulations to Lisa Kantenbrecher too. She's going to be the, she is the featured artist for the upcoming St. Louis art fair. And of course um, that we would all love to be there on the streets of St. Louis, but uh, instead they're doing a, a virtual art festival, uh, September 11th through the 13th. And um, Lisa is the featured artist, which means her, she's done the poster and the promotional material. Uh, but those other, um, Great artist Ella and Amanda are participating in that as well. So that's St. Louis Art Fair, September 11th to 13th. Definitely check it out. Check yeah. it out. And congrats, Lisa. Yes. Yeah. Congratulations, Lisa. It's such an honor to be the featured mm -hmm. artist of any show, right? Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. Totally. Totally. It's a big deal. So, dun da da da. It's time, time right. for and our featured artist. Let's bring that cue. I'm bringing him. Step away. <laughs> Get out of here, Beth. <laughs> Let's bring the star on. Yeah. Hi, Mark. Hi, Mark. Hey. Thank you so much for doing this. Thank you for playing in our playground, Seesaw yeah, like Playground. And um, I think you made a little video for us, didn't you? I did. I tried. Your work? Can we see yeah. what makes you tick? I think we should. I think it's better just to stop talking about it and let's just do it. Okay. Hey, okay. Max. Well, hello. My name is Mark Winter, and I am a metal sculptor from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. And this is my studio on my parents' farm just outside of Milwaukee. So I was hoping you could join me and we could take a look around and talk about process and look at some of my collections. And maybe throw some sparks around. Who knows? So this is the piece that started it all. I made this for Beth when we first met. She took me to a fancy store downtown, you know, one of them fancy downtown stores, and things were pretty expensive. And I thought, I can do that. I've got a welder. And that's how it all started. So this is how I go shopping. Sometimes I start my day by going to my little junkyard and taking something interesting out. Yeah, how lucky am I? I've got this amazing space and access to cool tools. It's a lot of fun. So I guess I'm a collector, not a hoarder. There's a difference, a legal difference. Look it up. It all started with oil cans for some reason. I can't tell you why I was just obsessed with oil cans. I found a box of them on, a, on the side of the street one time. And I just thought, this is so beautiful. And I just never stopped. 
to me, one of something is okay, but you get 500 of that same thing, now you got something. Now I can work with that. Whether it's a pile or all on the wall together or welded together into a ball. Who knows? Who cares? All these things are so beautiful and so forgotten. And they've done their work as they're what they were meant to be. Whether it's a wrench or spark plug. The work has been done, now they're just ready to move on and be appreciated for how beautiful they are. I don't know. Maybe it's just a sickness. But I don't see it stopping anytime soon, that's for sure. So I could not do what I do without music. The rhythm, the heartbeat, the pounding, the lifeblood of everything I do in my studio. It's always on when I'm working. It's always loud. And it's always fundamental. I never know what my day is going to bring. Sometimes it's easy, sometimes it's hard. But it's work. And I go to work every day. I never have a plan or a premeditated thought of what the piece is going to be. I let the metal speak for itself. I let the metal talk to me. It becomes what it wants to be. If I try to control it or try to try too hard, I just make a mess. And it shows in the piece. It looks labored, it doesn't work. So when I relax, take a breath, and not think and just do do the work. It seems easy. It doesn't seem like work. There's a moment where you can get in the zone. I don't care if you're a sculptor, or a painter, or a musician, or a basketball star. You're in that moment of not thinking, just doing. And if you shoot the ball, it's going in the net, guaranteed. Well, for me, it's welding. So I decided my world is 70% confusion and 30% success. And for the times when it's hard and it's just not working and it's painful, I've installed a do not take yourself too seriously horn. It's so hard. Wait a minute. Genius. And it works every time. All right. Welcome to the Lincoln tour. Now that you've seen where the sausage is made, why don't you come on in and meet some new friends? So, after traveling the country for so long, Beth and I realized we wanted a place to showcase our work in our own city, in Milwaukee. Well, after about five years' search, we finally found it. Right here in the heart of Bayview. First and foremost, it's going to be a studio for Beth to work in. Long overdue. You'll find out more about that in the next episode. But we found this little gem, and we're going to take care of it and have a place to showcase our work. And maybe have some friends over for a cocktail once in a while. Not the worst idea.
right, so thank you for spending some time with me today. Uh, if there's anything you can't live without here, please go to my website, markwintersculptures.com. Uh, there you'll find prices and dimensions and all that fun stuff. So thank you to Seesaw Project for all your hard work, and that's all I got. See ya. Mark, that was so great. That was so great. Dolores put you on your feather bottom. Right? <laughs> I want her so bad. I'm yeah, so I, I got a boyfriend for her. <laughs> <laughs> right? Wouldn't it be, wouldn't it be perfect? Ooh, I got to go this way. He'd be so perfect for yeah, her. Yeah. Little yeah. red belly. <laughs> like, before, we get, love that one. before we get to questions, I just want to say, I think that maybe you're selling yourself short a little bit when you just talk about the welding, because we know plenty of guys that are welders <laughs> that can't do what it is that you no. do, right? Yeah. The gesture, the gestures, the personalities that you give those characters. And I love it's, that it's not just welding, right? I mean, this is. I love that it's this hard, raw, utilitarian material that's been discarded, and then. You're making these little poetic things. The hands, my I love like my little devil. He's got these hands, yeah. but I mean, um, uh, well, Petun the way Petunia's I legs know. were crossed, right? She's just about to do a pirouette, right? Yeah. So, kudos on the welding, yeah. but uh, there's a little, there's maybe just a smidge more going on than uh, just and the devil more. has four toes. His eyes are so fantastic he's a weirdo weird his hands and feet and then he's got a little pocket what's in his pocket some nails you of know? course yeah of course right handy to have a pocket full of nails you never know what you're what the day is going to bring what else would the devil have in his pocket yeah right right <laughs> <laughs> so so we do have some we do have some questions i do have some questions okay i have answers so you want to start kina um well, um, I, I, you know, I've always wondered about about the materials. Like, can you just put anything together? Because I'm I'm looking at these those those urban tumbleweeds, which are over the top, and it just seems like they're all different kinds of yeah. metal. Yeah. And from what I'm told, that those different kinds of metal don't really go together. So you do yeah, there's, there's a few tricks I do behind the scenes that you can't see that under, under, underneath there's structure and I, things okay. are bolted and different. It's all welded. There's no glue or anything. It's okay. all, welded. but not to get too technical, but there's, there's ferrous and non-ferrous metals and they, they can be fused. It's complicated. I, I'm not a metal or just, you know, I, okay. I, was, I was auto body guy. So I, everything I learned, I kind of taught myself for the most part. Um, but yeah, if you, if there's a, when there's a will, there's a way kind of thing, you know, that's how I look at it. I think uh, I think it's amazing that 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 you made that flower for her. How long ago was that? Twenty-five. And that was your ago. first thing. <laughs> 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 hey, oh, we took glasses off. Wait, what? <laughs> yeah, I, honestly, true story. Beth, we, there was a store called Ecola in the Third Ward of Milwaukee on Broadway, and we were dating, and she took me there, and I, I was like. $65, are you crazy? <laughs> are you out of your mind? I'm not spending $65 for that thing. I'm sure it's worth it. I'm sure it's worth it. I really, I, want, I, I could make that. I know I could. It, well, it's so simple. So I bought some candles and I made that thing. That I, and my mother went, oh, it's so beautiful. Ah. And I was just like, okay, I say 65 bucks. That's all I know. And it got me, it got a birthday present and you know, so it, that's how it started. And that's a true story. I just, and I never stopped. And then I made, um, I remember I made a, a, this random weird bent metal thing. And this guy Rob came to my house cause I was working in his car. He's like, what the hell are you doing? I'm like, well, I'm making this or what is it? What's well, art? And he goes, and he goes, it's just something else to mow around. 
<laughs> guy who saw the lawn. He had to move it to move, you know, the lawnmower. So I, I, it, I just never, I just never stopped. And eventually, I had enough with encouragement from Beth and my mother and, and friends, and I had enough stuff to do a little small show in Cedarburg, Wisconsin. Uh, the little whatever strawberry field, strawberry festival, whatever the hell it was, and I made a thousand dollars. A thousand dollars. Can you believe it? It, it, might as, it might as well have been. A, it could have been a million dollars. It doesn't matter. Like that was enough to go. Right. Hmm. Mm. I can buy beer. <laughs> I thought I spied a PBR yeah. next to you while you were welding. So, 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 yeah, so Susie Paul says that uh, she loves the uh, we stack the rocks, and oh, and God. I I love those and the gathering the rocks. It, and I have not seen as much of that kind of natural element in your work. Is that is that uh, typical, or is that something I, new? I, no, I think maybe I think maybe I don't do that often. But when I do, it sells usually. Mm -hmm. Like every time I've had rocks involved, they're gone pretty much right away. It's an interest. It's a real interesting contrast. I think. Yeah. It's a yeah. Fantastic contrast. With yeah, the, I do. I like the bone or bits of glass or whatever. It's hard. It's hard to balance those things sometimes. But I, I do like incorporating, mm -hmm. you know, natural things. And then, of course, we don't want to get in um, YouTube jail. So you and we, fantastic music in there that was original for it. But, yeah. but dying to know what the music is. That you're actually listening to in your studio. In so your studio, what, what are you what, listening to? What are you listening to right now in the right studio? What's on replay? Repeat. Yeah, these days, it's um, Clutch. I, I, I think or I have you know I have these kind Appropri of appropriately named. For yeah, I kind of have these these bands that I've loved since the '90s. Some of them, and I it's I almost if I had a you know break glass in case of emergency thing with CDs in it, yeah. it would have Tool in it. It would have Slayer. It'd have Clutch. It have Johnny Cash, you know. It would have Devin Townsend. It would have Frontline Assembly. It would. There's a lot of like just, just music that has that pounding beat. This, you know, this. Uh, it just it makes me it just pumps my blood up, you know, and it keeps me going. And sometimes, when I'm lucky, I'll be working on a piece and I'll hit a piece of metal and it'll. Bing. The same note that's in the song at the same time. Oh, that's so cool! A lot of fun. I love when that happens. So I see. I see. Uh, Lindsay Ma is watching. Yeah. Hi, hi, Lindsay. But it hey. makes it, it makes me think. Um, it makes me wonder. I know that lots of people gift you items that end up in your work. It's funny. Uh, what are the strange? What's the strangest collection of items that oh. you? And, uh, gifted. That is, that is I, don't, I don't know if you set this up on purpose, but that is ironic because the by far the most strangest came from Lindsay Ma. Yeah, I, I think I think we were there with you when it happened. Maybe not the strangest. Was it? Now I gotta know. There's been, uh, it was it was mostly gynecological tools that he had. You know, I don't I don't want to know where they came from. <laughs> not my business. I'm not a cop. I don't care. Right. <laughs> Um, anyway, Lindsay, he's great. He just he gave me this box of these beautiful tools one day. I was like, I, I, I can't, I haven't used any of them because they're so beautiful and so intense. What the hell am I going to do with these? So they so sit Lindsay, in the floor. Lindsay, every time, every time people come to my studio, a self portrait. Yeah, maybe. Every time people come to my studio, I uh, give them a tour, and that's that's on the tour is <laughs> Lindsay in my collection. Yeah. So did you hear Lindsay? Read it again, Kina. Oh, it says, uh, "Have you ever done a self portrait?" No. Oh well, maybe maybe you should. Yeah. I don't. I don't think I could. I don't know. I just. Don't <laughs> think I could. Are they all self portraits? Be Are too you a little bit devil and a little bit ballerina all? Maybe. Because my devil is very posed in a ballerina pose. That's why I I absolutely love him so much. He's you know. Yeah. And you know it, it's funny because before before I got this one, I was thinking, oh my god, it'd be really cool to get one that like hung on the wall to go out on the patio. And I've actually never I never asked you if these even can go outside. They can. They certainly can. Um, some do better than others, you know. And there's certain you can coat them with urethanes and epoxies and. and oh, okay. I just did an installation in. in uh, in Evanston, Illinois, where that's going to be outside forever. And I, oh, nice. Okay, so if you know that it's going to go outside, you, you can kind of yeah plan ahead and cool. 
at the same time, you know, a lot of the metal that I use has been outside longer than we've been alive. Right, right. Where's right. it going? You know, whatever. It's rust. No, it's not rust. It's patina when you're paying for it. <laughs> right, right, right. You don't want it. So spe speaking of finishes and the patina, I love the colors. Um, yeah. And it, that's all, I mean, are you modifying any of that or that's I mean, all found on the metals? What's All the beautiful stuff that you're talking about is already found on there. Like yeah. the red on my devil is just so gorgeous. Yeah, that's a, that, your, your guy was a, a, a simplicity snowblower, I think. Wow, that's uh, so cool I think, to know that. I, I think another good example, you talk about the, the guy that holds the uh, with the rocks, stacking the rocks. Yeah. His chest has that like beautiful worn down feet. It's so beautiful. And that, that, that's, that was caused by corn. So it came off a corn combine. And that's just decades of corn rubbing against, rubbing that, against that piece of metal. How many, wow. guys, who knows how many thousands and thousands and thousands of corn cobs did that. Wow. So much life and personality in all of those pieces uh, from all of that history, you know, that's come before. Yeah. I know everybody's getting it like I am now like I think of inanimate objects as like ended like you know personalities yeah. and I love everything that it gets in brand new life. Yeah. yeah. Crazy. You know? And I, I I'll even go one further that I, one of my favorite things is old toolboxes that say from the 60s, 70s, or even earlier if I'm lucky. But an old toolbox, the most beautiful part is the bottom. Mm. No one ever, whoever looks at the bottom of the toolbox right. and how right. many thousands of floors they just set down on and how because many you'd have to lift it up and be yeah, really like, happy. No, one, no one's ever looked, but they're so they're so scarred and so beautifully worn. And, and back then they used serious metal so you can work with it. It's not thin shit, you know. Sorry. Can I swear on Seaside Project? <laughs> yes, you can. <laughs> <Thank Yeah>. <laughs> Oh, anyway, um, yeah, the bottoms of toolboxes are, are amazing. Well, it's been really, really awesome uh, to have you, and we yeah. could go on talking yeah, for a talk long time. But where should they go? Oh, you got another yeah. one? You know, I before? wanted to, I, I did want to ask, like, are these are brand new, and are they on your website? They are. And, okay, okay. Like now, like, okay. I'm going to bring, I'm going to bring in the smart one of the team. It's the boss is here. While while the video was playing, uh, the site, the for sale site, went live. So everything oh. that we saw there, I think there's a couple pieces that weren't in the video, um, all listed under. It says for sale. Great. It's simple. Um, all there. You can go check it out now. And it's gonna be uh, like a game of slapjack over there. <laughs> 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 Thanks, Mark. Okay, thank, thank you, you guys. Thank you so, so much, Mark. Yeah, that was super fun. I'm glad we did it and love you all. Love you too. Appreciate it. You come on over. All right. So thanks. Thanks, wow. you guys. Um Fantastic. that was really awesome. That was really awesome. But now we have to talk about what's next. What's next? <laughs> so Max, can you this is what's next? How exciting. Oh, I can't wait. September 10th. Beth, did you did you know? Did you remember you were up next? Oh, yeah. You know, that's two wait, weeks. What is away. this? Is this it's new uh, paintings. I'm super excited. I don't course. know if it's gonna fit into my schedule. I think I got something that day. One of my favorite painters ever. Oh, oh, and then I'm ap after that. That's me. <laughs> it'll be brand new stuff that you've never seen before. I swear it'll be really fun. Put it on your calendar. <laughs> Make sure you come. And then, oh my God, I can't wait for this. I can't wait, Lenny. I can't wait. Lynn Whipple. If you guys don't know Lynn Whipple, this is going to be a real treat. Mm -hmm. She's um, uh, one of the most awesome people I ever met. And I've been a fangirl for <laughs> like 20 years of Lynn. So yay. I'm super excited that Lynn's going to be on the show. Thanks, Lynn. And then after that, we're going to get her cute ass husband, John Whipple. It should say John Whipple Creative Genius because this guy is amazing. Um, I have two of his paintings and two of his sculptures, but I think I need another painting. Anyway, he's one of my all time faves. I love these pieces. And wait, we got one more. I know we have one more, don't we? Yes. This one I'm super, super excited about. I love Helen Gottlieb's work. Uh, it is almost as beautiful as she is. <laughs> I can't wait for you guys. 
um, to meet her and see this uh, intricate, I don't even know like how she is so prolific. Uh, cause it's so detailed and so exquisite. And a lot of her pieces are gold leaf. I, I really, really am excited for that one. So anyway, we got a fun season. We do. We're, we're stuck at home. Right. No shows. We're gonna, we're having fun anyway. And um, busy, busy. Yep. Uh, let's um, just remind you one more time, besides the artists that are getting featured in episodes coming up, we want the names of artists we should know about. So again, send us your video, 10 to 15 seconds, your name, where you're from, and the name of the artist you wanna shout out with their city and their medium. Links on Facebook in the comments, as well as YouTube. We hope you can find them. We hope we made it easy for you. If we didn't, let us know so that we can fix that, that issue. But um, yeah. Yeah, we wanna hear from you. We're so ha we're so happy that you're here, and uh, like the name Seesaw Project implies, uh, it takes uh, more than one person to make this thing work. Um, so we're lucky to have partners, but we're lucky to have you too. So if you like what we're doing, um, please like our page, uh, follow our Facebook page, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. It's something really simple that you can do to help us get a larger audience for what we're doing. And really, it's something that you can do to help support any artists that you like. Um, it might seem insignificant, but it does help us get our work in front of other people, especially right now when we don't have any shows. Um, if you're able to and you'd like to help us defray some of the cost of uh, putting on Seesaw Project, some of the technical side to stream this, um, you can Venmo us at uh, Seesaw Support or we've got a button uh, that will be found in the comments on Facebook. Uh, and if you've got a show or a business and you're interested in sponsoring an episode, uh, reach out to one of us. We'd love to talk with you about how you might like to participate with us. So I think that's the end for us. Um, don't forget to answer our um, Ask a Collector so that we've... Uh, we really, really want to know how we else do want to know. We need some tips too. I mean, you yeah. know, like I could use some tips. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and now it, uh, we'd really like to thank a few people. Um, special thanks to Ben Davis for um, Mark's video. It was really awesome. Uh, our fabulous Mr. Kyle Dahlquist for his uh, musical genius and noise making. Victoria Hemminghouse for her shout out. We miss you, uh, we miss you Victoria. <laughs> Max Crow for his behind the scenes work. And for everybody who was able to uh, make a donation and support us, we thank you from the bottom of our hearts. Really, 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 really appreciate that. And to the artists featured in today's episode, Mark Winter, sculptures.com, Richard Harrington.com, Ella Richards, go to scissorsdrawings.com. There's an S after scissors. I got to tell you, I didn't know that to begin with. So um, Lisa Pattenbracker at lisauntitled.com and Amanda Outcult at Amanda Outcult. Dot com. And I just want to quickly thank, it's really good to see friends pop up in the comment section. Hi to everyone who watched yes. today. Thank you. Thank um, you. Thank you. Really, thank, thank you. It's good Thanks for playing you. with us. Of faces I haven't seen in a while. Chris, one all, more. In all of those websites, I see Kyle's putting, Kyle's putting all those websites over in the comments. <laughs> so um, Kyle. you should be able to link to them over there um, as well as well. And as always, uh, please go and see more of our work, bethbajarski.com, kinacrow.com, and chrisdolquist.com. Um, we'd love for you to learn more about what we've got going on. Thanks for playing. Good Thanks episode. for playing with us so we don't have to play by ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> I'll leave that there. <laughs> see you in two weeks. Two weeks. Bye. Bye.